My entitled aunt tried to announce her daughter's pregnancy at my baby shower, and I couldn't be more upset. My husband and I are finally expecting our rainbow baby after years of infertility and multiple miscarriages. It's safe to say we and our family are very freaking excited. My mother is probably the most excited. She's been planning our baby shower and making decorations for months. She's been the biggest help during this exciting yet scary pregnancy. A few weeks ago, my aunt told my mother and I that my cousin is pregnant, and we are honestly very very happy for her. However, my aunt said their plan is to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower, apparently because we're going to be having a big party anyway, so it just makes sense. She said it's not a big deal and that we can both just share the day. I said absolutely not because we've been waiting for this day forever and it should be all about me and my rainbow baby. My mother's on my side and told my aunt that they better not announce anything at the party, so my aunt dropped it and nothing else ever was really said. Last Saturday was my baby shower. It was every Everything I've waited for. Everything is going good. No one has announced my cousin's pregnancy. When it was time for us to eat my cake, my aunt said, hold on, hold on everyone. And she went outside to her car to go grab something. That was the moment I knew something was up. My mother and I follow her outside and my aunt decided to bring a cake announcing my cousin's pregnancy and some presents for my cousin. My mother immediately told my aunt that she will not be bringing those back into the party and that they will not be ruining my day. My aunt started throwing a fit. She started screaming, this is a baby shower. It's for babies. And your cousin is having a baby too. So this day is about her too. My cousin now joins in and starts screaming at us, saying how pissed off she is, that everything is always about me, asking why we always have to just be happy for me. They were so mad they would not stop screaming. Eventually, the place that we rented for this party had to call security and had my aunt and my cousin kicked out of their facility. Because Because of this, half of our family was really upset with us that we wouldn't allow my cousin to have a moment at my shower too. So because of that, they left as well. Now apparently everybody is bashing my mother, myself, and my rainbow baby online. It's honestly a mess, but I'm glad that I didn't let them steal my spotlight. For those who don't know what a rainbow baby is, a rainbow baby is a baby that's born after a miscarriage, and it's a term used to describe the joy and hope after the storm of losing a baby. So obviously, this is not your ordinary baby shower shower. Like, how dare this aunt and cousin try and strong arm their way into this baby shower? This is not like any normal baby shower. This is a very specific and special occasion. The original poster literally lost their previous child, and they were so happy to finally have another baby on the way after years of trying. Those two people should be absolutely ashamed of themselves, and good for the mom and the daughter for deciding to stand up and say, no, absolutely not. Like, they even told them ahead of time that you cannot do this at my party. Like, wouldn't it be more appropriate to have your own party and get together? That way you can have your own spotlight and it really can be all about you? But no, they decide to literally bring their own cake and their own gifts just to try and make it all about them suddenly. Like, that's not okay. And as for the rest of the family being upset about this, fine, be upset. If they can't see that this is a special day of some kind, then they are the ones with the problem, not you. This next story came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own stories. Am I the jerk for wanting to cut my father out of my life? To start things out, I'm going to admit that I am very young. I'm a 15-year-old female and I might be overreacting about this, but I still want to get some perspective. When my mom found out she was pregnant, she obviously told my father. Instead of my father being happy, he denied it was his and accused my mom of cheating. Fast forward and I'm born. My great-grandma was there. My grandma and grandpa on my mom's side were there. Even my grandparents on my father's side was there, but not my father. We got a DNA test to prove that I was his child, and my grandparents were ecstatic to actually be grandparents, but not my father. I would like to mention that my mother got married only once, and that was last year with a guy that she dated for 10 years. So when they split again, my father was not required to be present in my life. Fast forward to the point in my life where I finally started remembering things. My mom had gotten pregnant with a man that didn't throw her out. I am sure that this guy is actually my dad, but every time I called him that, He said no. My sibling is born and I am happy. However, things take a turn. My mom started noticing that I acted different from other kids and my mom took me to a doctor. I was diagnosed with ADHD, OCD and autistic tendencies, which is like autism but not completely. I still have problems with sarcasm and emotions to this day. This was a deal breaker for my sibling's father and he kicked us out saying he would visit my sister, which only happened once as he now lives in Florida. We ended up homeless and my father still did the minimum 
minimum. And no, he didn't take us in. He just paid $50 extra for the child support. We ended up with my great grandma where she slept on a recliner. My mom and sister slept on the bed and I slept on the couch. The place we were staying at was only a one bedroom apartment. We moved out and into a house thanks to my amazing mother. She met a man who has done more for me than my father ever has. At this point, I think my father is no longer alive. I thought this honestly for two years. I'm with my grandparents on his side, whom I see almost every week. They tell me that he's not passed away and they let me call him. This was in the third grade. I talk to him more often, but I recently came to realize that all my problems were his fault. He doesn't pay enough child support to actually support me, which was proven when I had to go a week only eating school food and leftovers from my neighbors. He stopped calling me again and I'm considering just cutting him off. He didn't send money when I told him about my food problems at home. He showed little to no sympathy for me when I attempted ending it and he puts little to no effort in our relationship. I want to cut him off, but I still want the relationship with my grandparents. They mean the world to me and I love my mom and stepdad. I fear ending relationships with my father will sever my family's relationship with them too, not just mine. Am I overreacting in this situation? What should I do? This is a really tricky situation because it sounds like this is something that runs a lot deeper than just your own experience. It sounds like when it was time for your dad to actually be your dad, he did not step up to the plate and instead ran away. And I think in my opinion, that's all I would ever need to know in order for me to understand who my dad really was. And it sounds like from my perspective of just what we've heard, he's not a very good person. So no, I don't think you're the jerk for deciding to cut him off. If I was in your shoes, I probably would have done the same thing. But I completely understand your other perspective too. You don't want to ruin the relationships you have with your grandparents. So whatever you decide to do, I hope it all works out for you because this is a really tricky situation no matter how you look at it. An entitled woman intentionally puts her own hair in her food. Also, she wouldn't have to pay her bill of $130. Last night was my last training night as a server with my restaurant, which basically meant I did everything that night with my trainer following me around and making sure I didn't mess up. So I go up to this table introducing myself and my trainer and we start walking this woman with her three kids through the menu. She says that it's her first time here repeatedly and she apparently lost her reading glasses. So we have to coach her through everything. So my trainer and I tag team the situation. My trainer takes the lady who can't really read without her glasses and I take the three teenagers to get their orders. Eventually, everybody at the table settles on some food and we get some orders. Someone else ends up bringing the food out and the person who's bringing the food out is bald. We checked on her table afterwards and she said everything tastes great. As I'm checking on another table later, I see her waving me over, asking me to come over to her table. It's at that moment she shows me these three black long strands of hair, all of which that's in her food. I apologize and run the plate to my manager and let him know the situation. My trainer and I start talking and we both have light hair and my trainer's hair is in a tight military bun. So then we try to find out who ran the food out and that's when we confirm that the person who did it is bald. So at that point we start going down the line of just about everybody in the restaurant who could have possibly have touched her food. And one by one we confirm that none of the people on our line or in our staff had hair that matched the description. And that's when our suspicions raise that this woman actually just put her own hair in the food so that she could get her money back. And that's exactly what happens. This woman gets her entire check comped and then goes through the effort to get our attention as she leaves and gives us each a dollar on what would have been a $130 bill. She then tries to tell us how we were great with our service and all this other stuff. But at this point, all of the staff know that it's her own hair that she put in the food and that she honestly just didn't want to pay for it. They walked away getting a free meal and I wish I could have been able to call them out on it. I wish you could have called them out on it too because that's just such a ridiculous situation. This lady ripped her own hair out of her head just so she could get a free meal. No one else on staff fit the description of having that type of hair except for the lady sitting in front of the plate. And while they couldn't obviously confirm that hey you put your own hair in this food, just by the process of elimination they could pretty much confirm that hey it has to be your own hair. Which is honestly just a terrible situation to be in regardless. Because how can you prove otherwise? This lady could probably freak out and start losing her mind in this restaurant if you didn't comp the meal. So it truly was a situation where you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. That restaurant should honestly think about getting some cameras to try and prove if this actually happened in the future. That way they can probably save more money and they won't lose $130 for a meal. All because some lady lied and stuffed her own hair in the food. I have been betrayed by my daughter, my partner, as well as my housemate and I don't know what to do about it. So I live with my partner, my daughter, and my partner's best mate. We have been together for a year and a half and 
and things have always been pretty good. His mate and I don't see eye to eye. In fact, he has never liked me since he moved in. He is very lazy, is leeching off my partner, and taking advantage of him. I have spoken to my partner plenty of times about this, but he says it's his mate and he needs to help him. My partner and I both work full-time jobs, and neither of the other two work. I do all the cooking, cleaning, laundry, everything for all four of us. I will cook a massive roast dinner, and they will all sit and eat it, but I'm left with all the dishes and the cleaning up. I have tried leaving it, but after two days, my OCD kicks in and I have to clean it. I'm just so exhausted. Countless times I've asked for help, but I've gotten none. My partner doesn't like confrontation, so he just makes a joke about it and then nothing else. The last six months, it's gotten worse, and I feel very unsupported by my partner, and even to the point where he will side with them. My daughter is very clingy and has anxiety. I have to beg for time for my partner and I to have alone because my daughter is always with us. If we go out for dinner, she is there. What I have found recently, though, is that the two of them have been going out without me and just going and doing stuff for hours. For instance, I will ask her to go to the shop or get something and he will offer to drive her or to go with her and they will just get whatever, go visit friends, go for a drive, stop at the pub for a drink and then come home two hours later. All the while, I've been at home cooking and cleaning or just sitting around. I have asked time and time again that it stops, but they just say they never plan to and that it all just kind of happens out of nowhere. My daughter and I were close and have been through a lot together. She knows how much this hurts me and yet she continues to do it. So last night they were out and three hours later they come home with his mate. When I said that I didn't realize that my partner's mate had been out, they said that they passed him a few blocks away walking and honestly this is kind of normal. Well, I come to find out that they left an hour later and he snuck out and they picked him up around the corner and they all went out to the local club for a few drinks. I read the messages between the mate and my daughter. She is going on about sneaking out to come hang out with them, that I've been such a terrible person and that they should just forget about me, that apparently I'm boring and that all I care about is that the house is clean. He responded with a yeah, I agree and that we didn't like each other anyway, stuff like that. My partner was even in on this. He was there and then lied to me about what happened when they got home. I feel so betrayed and like I'm the laughing stock of this group. I found out also that this is not the first time that this has happened. Do I leave? Do I pull my partner aside and give them an ultimatum? What should I do? This is a super toxic situation. To have not only your daughter but other people in the house that you're living with not only completely ignore the needs of the house but then ignore the fact that you are basically the only reason that this house is even presentable is really not okay. And the fact that your partner is in on this and lie to you about all this stuff is also a super big red flag. The original poster went on to say that they woke their partner up to talk to them about all that was going on. They asked them, do you love me and do you want a future with me? In which the partner responded, yes. The original poster goes on to say that they know about all the things that happened last night and that they blatantly do not want their mate staying with them any longer. And this partner told them to just stop it, rolled over and went back to sleep. And as of their last update, they're packing their car and they're currently planning on leaving. Honestly, good for them. It's clear that the partner is not taking this seriously. They can say that they love them, but they're clearly not showing it. So I think this is a fantastic move in the right direction. Hopefully everything works out and hopefully the relationship with your daughter can somehow be mended and fixed in some way that's good for everybody involved. But what would you do? Leave a comment down below. If you were in this situation, how would you handle it? Let us know. Today I messed up by cutting my own bangs and now my hair looks terrible. A couple of years ago, I I decided I want bangs, mostly because I kept thinking about this certain hairstyle that I saw. So I cut it myself to a length that would look cute untucked, but still be tuckable in case it turns ugly. It's basically curtain bangs, but less noticeable and requires less maintenance. It's not the best when it comes to looks, but it's still okay. It does the job of bringing more flair to my round face. Eventually they grow past my shoulders, so it was time to cut it again. The first time it turned out okay. It came out better than the first attempt. Then to Today, I realized that I would be around some more people. While I don't usually like the spotlight, I didn't want to fall in the background. So that's when I made the decision that today was going to be the day that I trimmed my hair. Previously, I finally gained the courage to offhandedly remark that I was interested in bangs to my mother. And when we went to cut our hair, she asked the hairstylist to give me side bangs. It wasn't noticeable. In fact, it kind of looked like my actual bangs that I did myself, but it was on the wrong part. So one bang was longer than the other, if that makes sense. Fast forward to today and the one thing I needed to do while cutting my hair was even it out. The scissors 
clothes I was going to use was outside, so I went to get it. I was impatient and I cut my hair without a mirror. And this proved to be a fatal wrong move. Just by seeing the pieces of the hair that I cut, I already knew that it was uneven. It's hard to explain. I went to my room that has a mirror and tried doing the other bang. It turned out better than the other one, but if you looked at both of them, you could tell that they were not straight. I didn't know what to do, so I put the scissors back and I tried to see what I could do to salvage my hair. With my hair down, you can tuck my bangs behind my ears and nothing looks super strange. But if you put it up in like a ponytail, only one can be tucked in. It's just a small thing, but oh my god, it annoys me. Thankfully, it'll be fine by the time school starts. And in the meantime, I think I'll look better with my hair down anyways. So the moral of the story, next time you want to cut your hair yourself, don't do it. I hate to be that guy, but I mean, did you expect anything less? You literally cut your own bangs without a mirror. What did you expect was going to happen? Sometimes you can get lucky and try and figure it out just by looking up, I guess. But you should have used a mirror. You clearly got it right last time. Why would you risk it just because you're being impatient? Especially with something like hair. Overall, though, I've been in this situation and it's a terrifying feeling. Having your hair look weird or kind of off, especially when you're in school, is just not a good feeling because you know somebody might say something. And that alone is more than enough to freak anybody out. So yeah, next time you want to cut your hair, maybe think about what you're doing. Or at the bare minimum, make sure you have a mirror. Today, I messed up by telling my boss's husband about her affair. I've been working at my job for almost three years now. It's a very small business and all of us are super close. Once a year, we all get together for our annual Christmas party. And when the drinks start going, everyone starts to spill the tea. It was my first year working there. And after many drinks at this Christmas party, I found out through my boss that she's having an affair and wasn't hiding it in any way, shape or form. Even though I think cheating is awful, it was not my place nor any of my business to say anything. So I kept that information to myself. However, over the course of the next two years, she would bring this guy to work, come in on days where we were closed to have, quote, alone time with him, and generally just leaving things in disarray before people can get into the office. It was getting worse and worse, and every time I saw her husband, I felt sick to my stomach, knowing what I know. Fast forward to yesterday. One of our co-workers was getting married, and I was sat at the same table as my boss and her husband, along with my other co-workers. When her husband left to get a drink, she started to tell me about her crazy night with the other man, and I couldn't hold my feelings in anymore. I politely asked her if we would change the subject because I didn't feel comfortable talking about her affair while her husband was 10 feet away from us. She got visibly upset and ran off. And when her husband got back to the table, he asked why she was so upset. I lied and said maybe she just had one too many to drink because again, it wasn't my place to say anything. I went to go to my boss and when he left, I asked my coworkers at the table if I was wrong for what I said. They said no, but to maybe just let her rant next time and keep my opinions to myself to avoid any drama. My response was, I'm sorry, but it just feels wrong pretending I'm okay with cheating, especially when everyone at work knows about him. Everyone's jaw dropped and I heard a voice from behind me saying, she's still seeing him? The voice behind me was her husband and I didn't even see or hear him coming back to the table. Turns out that she has been seeing this guy for close to 10 years and at one point her husband caught them and told her that if she ever talked to him again, they were over. I was mortified and just kept stammering because how do I answer that? He quickly got his things and left. Some of my co-workers are calling me a jerk and to be honest, I definitely feel like one. I just potentially ended their marriage. I don't know how I even mend this situation, let alone if I still have a job after this. What do I do? You need to first take a deep breath and realize that this is not your fault. Any co-worker who's saying that you're a jerk is a terrible person. I mean, honestly, let's actually look at this for a second and think about what actually just happened. This lady was publicly parading around the office, bragging about how she's basically cheating on her husband. Like, if it wasn't you that was going to spill the beans, it was eventually going to be somebody else. This is a classic situation of, you play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. And in this case, she won a very stupid prize. And you didn't do this. She did this to herself. She sunk her own marriage by deciding to go behind her husband's back. And that is not your fault. So I wouldn't feel bad about this in the slightest. And I don't think it's right for you to have to keep someone else's secret that is so damaging and detrimental. Like, you have no obligation to these people in any way, shape, or form. At the end of the day, they are just co-workers. Like, I'm pretty sure your job description did not include keep your boss's secret affairs. If they want to try and fire you, they better have a good reason. Otherwise, I smell a lawsuit, personally. But all in all, I'm really sorry this situation happened. And if anything, I would probably look for a better job. Because your co-workers, as well as your boss, don't sound like the best people. And I think you would probably be a lot happier in a different situation. 
Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.